It's often useful to be able to sketch the deflected shape of a beam, such as the one in the example, either just to get a feel for how the structure's behaving, or to check an algebraic answer, or perhaps because we've simply been asked to in an exam. It turns out this is quite easy if we can use two pieces of information, the boundary or support conditions of the beam and the bending moment diagram. In this example, we'll start with the boundary conditions. And here we've got at the right hand end a pin support. So that immediately tells us that the deflection at that point is zero. It doesn't tell us anything about the gradient of the beam, though, so it's one piece of information. At the right hand side, because it's a fixed support, we know again that at this point the deflection is zero, but we also know that the gradient of the beam is zero at this point. So we'll take these pieces of information and start to add them to a sketch of the deflected shape of this beam in the bottom right there. So the zero deflection at the left hand side we can perhaps just indicate with a small dot, and the zero gradient we can indicate by a very sh short horizontal line. Similarly, the zero gradient at the right hand side we can indicate with a, a dot like that. Now, that's telling us a few bits of information, but we've still got this big gap in the middle where we don't know what the beam's doing yet. And to fill this in, we need to know something about the bending moment of the beam. And the reason for this is uh, it comes back to the moment curvature relationship, this equation that crops up again and again in structural mechanics. It relates the bending moment in a beam to the curvature, or how bent a beam is. And with the sign convention we're using here, what it says is a positive bending moment gives rise to a curvature which has the beam concave upwards, so a sagging, sagging curvature. Now, the, the bending moment diagram for this beam is as we've got in the top right there. We can either calculate that, or look it up in a book, or maybe just sketch it quickly. We're not dealing with numbers here. What we see is it's got two parts. The right hand side we've got a positive bending moment, so that's where the beam is sagging, and on the left hand side we've got a hogging part where the beam is, is hogging. So what this means is on the right hand side we expect the curvature of the beam to be concave up, and we can perhaps indicate that with a little smiley face like I've done there. And then on the right hand side we expect the beam to be hogging, so we can in indicate that with a, an unhappy face like I've got there. Between these two regions is a, a, a point on the beam uh, known as a point of contraflexure where the beam is straight, there's no, no bending at all. So with this information we can complete the deflected shape of the beam and we can just sketch it quickly like that. And so we see on the left hand side we've got this hogging deflection, on the right hand side a sagging deflection and we have to link that between the boundary conditions that we've identified. I've also indicated there with the short black line the point of contraflexure where the beam is not bent at all. This is a simple example, but we can use exactly the same techniques in more complicated problems as is uh, shown in a, the second video of this series.